That's um. Well, there. <laughs> w- w- what is it? So um, there's like a clip in a rap song I like. That's like a dude ta- like explaining the difference between um, or it's it's explaining um. Uh, the sublime experience there has to be an element of clear and present danger and the example that that the guy gives in the song is um being smothered to death by kim kardashian's butt cheeks and um i've never i've never bothered to i haven't read that much philosophy so i've just kind of taken this with me (laughs) 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 i've just kind of decided i'm like yeah that's what that is (laughs) the ultimate stoic uh, yeah i'm like kim kardashian's booty yeah or no i think that's like a schopenhauer thing right is or is he the guy who talked about sublime something I've I've got I've I've got a T-shirt with a Sublime logo on it. I think they're a pretty good band. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. I had the poster. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Are we? Are we doing are like we, an intro we or like I don't know? What is this? I don't know. I don't even think I don't even think we should do an intro. This means let's, war. Let's it's Bitcoin. It. It's war. All is fair. Yeah. Tell me about the comic. I mean, should we man? talk about that? It's wartime Bitcoin. It's wartime. It's wartime Bitcoin. There's Bitcoin. There's war. I don't know. You got the picture. There's time. Time. There is always time. There's always it's a time. <laughs> it's a time this is machine. Gonna be a sloppy rip. I can already tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's let's do an intro just to like start us off. Just I agree. Like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. To, yeah. we we need momentum. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Welcome to how many podcasts? Welcome. Yeah. We have two welcome guests. Welcome to the war room for the first time ever. High quality mic setup. We're all in the mic. Uh, we have with us people who will introduce themselves by their real names or their noms de guerre as it might be yeah who do we have with us uh, uh, uh mr guerre what was that your nom de guerre i'm You're- mr guerre uh <laughs> nice to meet y'all no uh mark goodwin here known spook mark uh goodwin. known spook yes uh paychecks come from langley uh, excited to be here, excited to fight. I like war, all is fair in it, which is the thing I like the most about it. Mm-hmm. Happy to be here. What's going on? Uh, I didn't think of a nim before this, so 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 I'm going to go with, I'm Telly, let's go with that. Nice. I don't know. Um, and I'm on a podcast. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're here, we're at war. Um, I mean, the world is at war. The really. world is at war. Economic war, spiritual war. Oh, God. There's a war for your mind. Yeah. It's karmic war. It's chaos. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're gathered here to just sort of spurg out. About we want to hash basically. it out. We want to know what's going, where we are. Yeah. You know? I, I have a subject I, I kind of wanted to cover first. It was a thing that uh, right before we hit record, uh, Bitcoin as a DARPA project. Yeah, you were kind of yeah, saying let's, so, let's something about right that, uh, it, Mark. Mr. Right. Mr. Gare. Well, I I would say this for, for the first first and foremost, like at the top, I really I think the beautiful thing about Bitcoin is that it it, it really doesn't matter who made it. So mm. I think what it is is what it is, and we should treat it like that. And so any speculation as to where it came from is like it's very secondary to the actual protocol, right? Sure. Just to be very very clear about that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like the way I look at the current situation, it's like. <clears throat> There's an absolute possibility that Bitcoin was created for exactly the situation to create a demand instrument that could balance out the inflation of the dollar. <clears throat> how does and, that how does that work? Uh well the uh you know, this sort of idea of like the petrodollar being the you know, the energy system that, you know, we force people to buy dollars to buy petrol. Mm-hmm. Same kind of thing is kind of happening with the dollar, we're seeing, you know, tonight even, it might have already even happened and we didn't even look, but like world currencies are just like collapsing against the dollar as interest rates raise and it strengthens against all these relative currencies. The dollar has all the leverage over the world right now, but it's over leveraged against itself. So eventually it is going to collapse in on itself. It has to mathematically. And when that happens, where is that access valve of liquidity going to go? into a, uh, you know, a protocol or an asset that has a cap supply and more importantly, a capped issuance. And so Bitcoin kind of appears out of the, the mess of what we're about to go through, which is all kind of downstream of rates and resets the universal rate of inflation for money in this ideal way, in a way that actually sort of preserves <clears throat> the dollar as like the currency as Bitcoin is the money. And right now people are using the dollar as money and not as currency. Uh, which is actually bad for the dollar. This, ultimately. this, but this relies on some. Th- you're using uh, money and currency in some like very specific way. Yeah. Not. I mean, usually they're interchangeable, right? Money and currency. Right. 
I mean, I would say people are now literally grabbing dollars and holding on to them because they're generating more interest. And so you're using it as this, uh, you know, store of value um, in this way versus like, you know, I'm, you know, I want to spend this fast or use this in a, you know, a high velocity way. So people are actually like, there's a huge demand for dollars mm. and people are then, you know, holding them and not, it's not actually like helping the U.S. economy in a lot of ways that there's a, that there's a strong dollar in, in, in many ways. So then if Bitcoin was made at Langley, like, does that imply that there was like a team of cryptographers working at Langley on making something like Bitcoin? Or did someone come up with Bitcoin and then like they were being monitored and like so like the CIA knew that they had like, do you know, like, well, I mean, yeah, they were definitely working on like in 96 on Halloween, they released a paper that um, like how to build the uh, cryptographic mint. Um, That was an NSA paper um, that talks about like the double spend problem and, you know, how you how you make a digital bearer asset that, you Mm -hmm. know, can't be double spent. Um, They were very clearly working on that stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, it's not, I don't know. I'm just a guy with an internet connection. Do you think that if, if like the CIA or whoever made Bitcoin, do you think that they were tripping really hard on DMT and meeting with the clockwork (laughs) elves and the clockwork elves gave them Bitcoin? Uh, I mean, there's also, you know, uh, there's CIA papers talking about like communal experiences of people like you know, giving like a hundred people DMT <clears throat> together in a room and then them all like experiencing the same visualizations. That's there are like saying. group hallucinations, you know, there, that is like documented, mm-hmm. you know, by our government intelligence agencies. Um, but I have no idea about, act, you know, where we were Bitcoin or whatever it came from. But, but I it would just say- It seems I like would, something the clockwork elves would do. <laughs> like I, that they yeah. would give us Bitcoin. Yeah. Something else. Like I mean, it just feels a little bit- A lot of people theorize there's like a uh, an extraterrestrial- uh, yeah, uh, some sort of contact. Yeah, but with Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, like or it came from like a Satoshi's code is just too shitty though. <laughs> like this is the thing is like if you read if you look at the early code, it's like it's so weird, it's so like idiosyncratically bad, and it's just like Windows binary. Like it's like you double clicked like Bitcoin.exe and then it opened up and it had your wallet and like the miner. I really I, I favor more of like a lone grad student or like bored like finance programmer did it in his like free time kind of model interesting yeah i think it's got to be someone who knows like cryptography like like a pgp related nsa related or a john nash related in that in that realm Mm -hmm. um and obviously someone who knows macro pretty well but yeah i think i think there's definitely something to the code base being kind of uh i mean satoshi was not like an expert coder by any means. Well, imagine your brain has been fried from doing like a hundred tabs of acid at one time, you know? (laughs) (laughs) There's many explanations for bad code is all I'm saying. Got it. Got it. I don't want to say bad code. Obviously, it's like code I've dedicated my life to. It's obviously genius code, but... Well, it's it's getting better and better. It used to be like really heinous and like people are cleaning it up, cleaning it up very slowly. Like Carl Dong. Carl Dong. Shout out to Carl Dong. Yeah, shout out to Carl Dong. Wartime Bitcoin hero. The first... uh, (laughs) The first um, honor. What what what? What's like a, a good award you win in in the army? Carl Dong a- Smasher Pass. <laughs> Smash definitely. <laughs> He's a beautiful man. S- Smash the dung. I don't know who he is, but just based on the names. He's an ex Bitcoin Core contributor who's done a lot to cleaning up the code base and like modularizing the code base. And he actually just stepped away from 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 Bitcoin full time development to focus on other things. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Fallen soldier. Yeah. Lost right. in the war. <laughs> there are many casualties of the Bitcoin war. You, Mark, you sort of have a theory like, or not theory, but like you think that like the, that the dollar cannot be pulled back from the brink. Right. Cannot be pulled back from the brink. Yeah. Just that like the <clears throat> amount of debt and everything is such that there's no where to go that can save it. Yeah. I mean, right now we're in a situation even just at like 4% where it's like we're, we're paying these 4% like, current- interest. Are we at 4% interest now? I think so. Okay. I think we just went up 75 basis points to 4%. Yeah, I have no idea. No, I'm sure. So. You, I think I'm sure, we're at I'm three sh- and a quarter and we just went, I'm pretty sure. Because we've gone 75, 75, 75. Hmm. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But I'm pretty sure. Um, I mean, we're paying like commercial banks like <clears throat> millions and millions and millions of dollars like every day just for like holding, you know. I mean, we're just at a situation where we're going to like as we raise rates, yeah, sure, we're much stronger, you know, relatively, but we owe 
a higher premium, a higher debt service on, you know, now we're up to, you know, 30 trillion plus, um, you know, we can't do a Volcker thing like an 80s thing and, and, but, you know, to actually do any meaningful damage to lower demand to, to crush inflation, we have to raise rates so high, um, mm-hmm. much higher than 4%. 4% is, is actually really low. Yeah, right. Historically, it's, it's incredibly low. low. Like, it's, what did we hit in the 70s? We hit like 20% interest uh, in the, in the 70s. 70s. In the 70s, we hit like 8% right before we went off the gold standard, mm-hmm. like in the late 60s. Um, then we, we chilled and went down had a big inflationary period. And then Volcker came in in the mid 80s or late 70s. But, you know, he did all of his craziness in the mid 80s and he went up. I mean, they were, it was double digits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it just crushed every single currency. Like, you know, exactly what we're seeing now, like every currency going down 50 percent plus, like mm-hmm. all the most important ones. And that's where that Plaza Accord came from, yeah. uh, which was that meeting where they which I didn't came. know about it. That's this is totally insane to yeah, me. Yeah, We need you to explain the Plaza. Yeah. Accord. So it was 80, 1985, September 22nd. So after Volcker came in. Uh, another example Paul of Walker, who was chairman of the Federal Reserve. Yes. Uh, another one who came in who was uh, he was nominated b- uh, by Reagan. Do you like Volcker? Do I? I mean, he he did. I mean, basically exactly what kind of needed to be done. But I mean, I don't like anyone that's really, uh, you know, messing with interest rates and kind of controlling, sure. you know, I mean, in this case, you can really see how rates really control everything and so he, they cracked up rates to, to sort of diminish this inflationary effects of the 70s and they went really really crazy high and uh it broke you know the, you know these these exchange rates with you know these really important uh you know fiat currencies it was west germany japan uh the uk and france that sounds right to me I believe just from reading the Wikipedia and um, and they all got together in the in the Plaza Hotel and they had a meeting and they like basically did like a, you know, a, a debt jubilee of sorts based on resetting all of the exchange rates. So they actually devalued the dollar extremely. Um, yeah, it was specifically <clears throat> like the the sort of Fed speak that was used would, would be it was agreed that it would be advantageous for non dollar currencies to appreciate. Right. That was like the summation of the of the deal. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly where, why we were going down the, the Plaza Accord train, uh, train of thought here. But because uh, you sent me like a wall of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> for sure. I, 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 <laughs> and not, I was like, I can't read this. I'm just going to need it. You, out yeah, on you were Telegram. asking me if, if, I, if I liked him, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think he did. He did what he, he thought he needed to do, I guess, or what he was told to do. Uh, to you know, <clears throat> to, to get down pass. inflationary Paul stuff. Paul Volcker smash or pass? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say pass. pass. I think I don't think uh, yeah. I, I don't fucks with any uh, central banker. Oh, I smash. Wow. Um, yeah, discipline with with me with me with those raids, daddy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ra- raise them up, huh? <laughs> But we can't do. Oh yeah, this is where, yeah. So this is why the situation is so different from that. Um, we did not have nearly as much debt as we do now, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. we were able to raise rates that much because our debt serve like the the advantage we got of raising rates and making the dollar so strong for a time was so much was so advantageous, and and and, and, and our debt service was 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 nominal. It was, and, it was, and the reason you can't raise rates when you have a lot of debt is because you raise rates and then your debt gets much more expensive to service. Like Absolutely. when you want to issue more debt, you need to like, it's not that the, that the rates that you're paying on your current debt go up because those rates are like fixed as it was issued. It's that as you're like rolling debt forward, any new debt that you issue has to be competitive with current rates. Right. So your so so your debt service load like slowly goes up as you issue more debt and you have to be at market rates, right? Also, when you raise rates, you do, I mean, you have, if, if you owe, you know, if banks, <clears throat> like you have to pay, uh, you know, debt service to banks that, that, that are holding bills. Yeah. I mean, you do if you raise rates. I mean, it's a short term thing. Usually they're like three months, three month uh, services. But yeah, I mean, I think, I don't think it's just new debt. I, I think it's anything that's pegged to the short term interest rate would go up. Right, right. Yeah. But we can't do that now. Because if we did that now, thirty trillion. Um, so we're in a situation like the way I kind of see what the market's doing right now. It's just, uh, I think Lawrence Lapard was 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 tweeting about this today. But it's like right now, this is sort of like the sea coming out 
uh, you know, before the tsunami comes back. Um, and this idea that the dollar demand is so strong and that the dollar is going to be able to like blow past like 120 on the Dixie or like, you know, What's get up Dixie? to 130. So the Dixie is just the, um, the exchange rate of the dollar to other currencies, um, the relative strength. It's, it's a basket index. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, we're like, completely gone parabolic like a total short squeeze or uh yeah short squeeze up we broke like 114 today which is just like wild so we were like the last time we were at these levels is when volcker raised these rates Mm. so this is the last time we've seen the dollar this strong but we didn't see the other currencies this week like this is we we haven't seen this i mean the the pound hasn't been this bad and yeah the the pound is almost at dollar parity yeah which is insane as we record this. Like I remember it used to be like, I remember that the pound was a big currency when I was a kid or it was, you know, it was fat compared to the dollar, right? Like it was like 2.2, you know, dollars per pound or something. Yeah. Now it's at one to one. Yeah. That's insane. And the Euro was, was like one and a half yeah. at least or something the Euro, like that. The Euro was actually, like the Euro was originally cents. introduced at dollar parity. That, Interesting. Yeah. That was the original value of the euro and then it immediately appreciated and we've only ever had a i think a a, a more valuable euro than a dollar yeah. and now it's like back it's yeah, like it's like nine no now yeah. it's below it's like 97 cents yeah or from something. from dollar parity you were born wow, really and to dollar parity you shall return so, so the, the ecp really set the euro from the get-go it was pegged to the dollar no 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 it, it wasn't it wasn't pegged it was just that it was it was released at right you know one to one dollar parity right, right that's a huge difference yeah, Fuck, yeah, yeah. mary kill the u.s dollar the pound the euro great great oh, question wow. i know it right away easy not even close okay go I mean, you you, you got to marry the dollar for sure, <laughs> and you fuck the pound. Yeah, and you kill the euro. And the euro, you don't even need to kill it. It'll just kill itself. Diana. That was dark. I'm sorry. I don't mean it like that, but the euro is, is <laughs> dead is what I mean to say. It's a currency. We can talk about the euro yes. killing itself. Yeah, exactly. yes, 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 yes. Diane? Let's see. I don't know. I was going to say... um uh, um. Just as like a, a programmer working at like a fintech company, a benefit of the euro is I have to program fewer things. Mm. Uh, you know, it's like, mm. all right, I don't have to put more things yeah, no in this enum. Yeah, no fucking Deutschmarks yeah, and so, Italian euros. You know, I, I'm gonna, yeah, Lira, exactly. So I was going to say, I was gonna say like, uh, uh, fuck the euro, uh, kill the pound. Uh, and I, I don't know, mar- marry the dollar, kind of like what you said. Yeah, the euro is kind of sexy. Yeah, I get what you mean. It's yeah, younger, right? it's a, the youngest one. I hate the euro. <laughs> it's like a, it's like it's like some bullshit like metric currency, yeah. like you know like the like the after the French Revolution they had like the decimal week they're gonna have the ten days in a I week love the decimal and we're week. gonna have like what like ten months in a year and no we're gonna have the yo yeah, it's all very logical you know well, ah. they they had well so like like I love that they like renamed the months also like Euro look, like sense. it's so confusing like 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 trying to learn about um. Uh, like the French Revolution, because it's all like the the coup of like eighteen Brumaire, and it's like when was that? Like what month? That you have to like translate. Brum, like Brumaire is yeah. Th- those th- those one of their months. They l- like all their spring months. It it, it was like a, a flower or something. And there's that that I don't know. They they named them all kinds of weird things. And they had the special week at the end of the year that was just five days. And all those five days had their own special names. I loved the like like um like obviously this whole thing is it, is kind of arbitrary and dumb. And like the enti- the entire idea. Of the uh, of the seven day week as so, uh, as someone who's working a nine to five I'm like oh like this arbitrary like system I find it really frustrating but we do need to centralize on like a single time protocol um, I I don't know I like lo, like the lo, like the decimal week it's it's dumb because uh, like hard forking to a new calendar protocol yeah. is it, it's it's really tedious and and doesn't actually work. Um, but like I, I kind of admire it. Like this, this notion of like sort of cultural decentralization, um, like lo, lo, like kind of like building from the ground up in that way. Oh, I mean, but it was so centralized. N- yeah, the heads, no, you're right. The heads you're right. Rolled and and they, they no, the, 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 the yeah, the French Revolution. You know? It's yeah, yeah. It was it it, it was it was um uh, a, a shepherd's tone of of um. What's a uh, shepherd's tone? Uh, let's call it a revolving door. Um, a, a shepherd's tone. A, uh, yeah, a shepherd's tone is. Uh, do, do you know what this is? Do you no, know not at all. No. Oh gosh. Okay. So the the basic <laughs> idea is it's like. Bit. 
um, uh, it's it, it's a rising tone, and then exactly an octave below that is the same tone rising at the same rate, and it and it's at all octaves that the human rate uh, the human ear can hear. Oh yeah, so and it so sounds like it's going it's up. It's always forever. rising, or, or you can have a descending one. Um, but in like um, did you ever play like Super Mario sixty four? Like like when you're walking towards Bowser, there's a descending shepherd tone. It sounds eerie. It sounds like like unsettling. It sounds like forever. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like l- l- like the French Revolution, which I don't know like much about it but like it was the shepherd's tone of what um uh like like a uh, uh centralized governments like uh, like uh tyrants like oh these guys are bad they keep doing war or, like they keep like oppressing everyone i'm gonna come in and beat those guys up and then i'll i'll force everyone to be the prog- pro- progressive mm-hmm. yeah. uh like like yeah. beautiful um like that th- the notion of left at the time you know it, like the terms left and right were invented at that time they don't perfectly yeah, map like, onto what we have today like the sides of the french like chamber or something yeah some political yeah. chamber oh, really interesting. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. the right wing of, of the chamber was filled with like um lots of aristoc- uh, aristocrats people who kind of like were sort of monarchists um like lo- like people who we would recognize as like being into that sort of like um central like like hierarchical type of authority and the left was like it it ranged from 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 what we might recognize today to to like socialists but also like some something closer to like liberals also um so it 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 has some mapping onto like notions of left and right today but we don't tend to deal with monarchists as much in the same way or maybe i don't know is that true do we deal with monarchists the queen died yeah. Well, yeah. I, I want to talk about that actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The face of fiat. Yeah. The face of fiat. Another casualty of war. Uh, the queen. The queen Grim. has died. Yeah. I don't know. I Do mean, you say the queen is dead? Long live the king. Yes. Long live the, the reign of queen. Charles. Go off, girl. Go yeah. off, girl. Like girl yeah. Boss, indeed. Yeah. There was some meme I saw that was uh, uh, making the point that like. Uh, there's so many laws in England that specifically specify the queen. We got to get the king to transition now. Mm, we got to yeah. like. <laughs> it's cheaper. Yeah, if it's you just, che- yeah. I know. We are, it, it might be good for so like England's the brand. What's the honestly. feminine of, of Charles? A uh, transitioned queen. Oh yeah, yeah, a yeah, trans- yeah, Charlotte, yeah. Charlotte, 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 King Charlotte the Third, K- Queen Charlotte the <laughs> Third. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, why not? He's so old anyway. Like, what is the cultural significance of the queen dying? And like, because I expected it to be almost like a non-event, but it, like, it seems like there were people who kind of like, uh, kind of came out in droves in England to, mm. to to be like, oh, I'm sad about this. Like, yeah. like shit got shut down. I, um, I wonder. It's hard a lot. for me to tell like propaganda from like what's right, actually happening. Right. Was it a big yeah. excuse to get everyone together and have a meeting? Yeah. You know? What's going on? Well, I think I think they really care about. Yeah. I like think they I, care. yeah. Yeah. But yeah. one thing Why? I think is really interesting about a monarchy Cucked. is like well well think about this think about this in a monarchy you're like your ceremonial figurehead mm. and the person who has you know actual power are different which is interesting like here we have the president who's both like the ceremonial figurehead and joe rogan who's like <laughs> joe the, rogan like, oh yeah the man the behind re- the, right, right. The, the 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 gray you know the, whatever the but i mean like it's interesting oh, i was gonna say kim kardashian or right, chris right. Jenner. yeah yeah that's You've got our your royal whole family the kardashians yeah. are the american royal family interesting yeah. when chris jenner dies i will be out on the streets sobbing on my knees <laughs> I will be like just like you in the I middle of the street. I died with Chris like, Jenner. You know, you know, you know. What's really interesting? I just found out that when when Lincoln was assassinated, they like allegedly, right, 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 right. <laughs> they like they uh they like preserved his corpse oh. and they like um <laughs> like put him in a train with like a glass mm. chamber and they like drove him across the country to be like, see. I went to. Uh, He's dead. That's I, isn't that so interesting? So cool. Kind of. But I like, wish they did that now. I was in. Uh, so weird. In Russia, in uh, the Red Square, <laughs> they have uh, Lenin in a glass yeah. like box. You can <laughs> yeah. see him. I How mean, does Mal- he look? Chairman Mao, is same way. He looks rough. <laughs> have you ever seen that? Uh, there's He's, a, there's Lenin, a Simpsons Lenin clip. Lenin be down horrendous. All right. <laughs> the, yeah. There's a Simpsons clip where it's like they're at the UN and. Russia's talking and they like press a button and the like, you know, the Russia thing switches to like Soviet Union and like all these animatronic things go off and like Lenin comes out of the, uh, yeah, the glass yeah, yeah. case. And starts What's going on if is if like if, if Putin loses this war, like this Ukraine thing is not going well for Putin. Like what happens to him? Does I don't he get, know. I does, think Putin wins. Yeah, I, 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 it's so hard to tell what's real and what's not yeah. over there. But I can't. I, how is Russia possibly losing to the Ukraine? It doesn't make any sense to me. A- apparently, there's been huge uh, territorial gains by yeah. Ukraine recently. Totally. Or at least that's what the bug men would have us believe. Right. Right. I mean, 
I mean, my answer of Putin winning is just purely a vibes-based uh, conclusion. You're, yeah. you're, you identify Putin as being sort of like the vitalist. It just feels like Russia's going to win or it's just going to be like a never-ending war. Yeah. Like it just think he's more winner, chat, you know? It's like, 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 it, like, it, it's, like if it's vibe-based, you, you just think he's like... It seems like they're just more in it. Like then, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, the like vibes. it just feels I, yeah. like they're in it. Like like he'll, like Russia will like collapse before, like he would pull out. Is the way that it feels. Like if Russia loses, it's because like Russia's over. Putin never pulls out. Right. Exactly. KGB don't quit. But you know what do I know? That's just a 50-50 chance I'm right. It's going to be like tomorrow, like, you know, (laughs) (laughs) Russia routed and somehow doesn't collapse, (laughs) like conclusion to war. Mostly because vibe's not right, you know? How how long is the, um, so so Aaron, how how long is the Kardashian-Jenner dynasty going to, is is it like the Habsburgs? Is this this a a thousand year dynasty that we're at the beginning of? (sighs) It's hard to say. I do think that the new generation, like Northwest, like, their child that the children um i think they're gonna be like the next like political figure like i think northwest might become president i doubt that kim or kanye will be like i wouldn't kim might be able to be president someday but i think northwest will like undoubt like she will rule the world it's really like a wild card like what's she gonna be like you know what if she's just like a normie dork how how old is she? How much are we? She's she, like d- nine. Does she have a public pro- oh, okay. Yeah. yeah she. Okay. I mean, she like turns looks and stuff. She does interviews. <laughs> like she's, she does interviews. Looks? Yeah. Wait, what does turning wow. looks mean? Yeah, I don't know. Like she like show like she has she's a stylist and what, like she what does turning looks what does that mean? Turning a look is like you show up somewhere and you have a good outfit. So like we us right now we're all turning. Yeah, like looks. I'm turning a look. Yeah, okay, we look got great. It, got yeah. it. Got right, it. Right, right, right. Yeah, we're so cool. Like Northwest like comes out in like fake nose piercings and like lipstick and like mm. whatever. Like she has a stylist and she clearly has like an image that she's aware of Bitcoiner as a nine-year-old. Or not a Bitcoiner. I don't know. Is or Kanye any, a Bitcoiner? Yes. Is he? Yeah. He's going to be. We're going to make it happen. That, they made that uh, Kanye coin and then he sued them back in 2017, like yeah. the ICO days. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Bitcoin Maxi. I felt like that was kind of a bitch move. Like, I, well, I, I think, yeah, I think, I think. <laughs> You're intellectual, sensitive to I just that think, kind yeah, of I'm thing. very sensitive about intellectual property. <laughs> I really hate intellectual property. Based. Yeah. I mean, Kanye, Agreed. I feel like it's a Bitcoiner just because he's just deranged. So mm. it just seems like. Like no, he's vibe talk, affiliation. He's talked, about it. Affiliation. he's talked about it before. I, he has some a quote where he's like, when I hear about putting Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill, that makes me just want to buy more Bitcoin. Or he has like, it's like a really, it's like a quote like that. Okay, mm. good for him. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, I can kind of see it like, like again, this is like a vibes based like, yeah. like estimate of him, but like, uh, he he's this like kind of outsider like 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 Yeezy. It's a, it, it seems like it's all about these like um like enveloping yourself. Um, you know, Bitcoin is this outsider money. Like, I feel like just like brand wise, fashion wise, like Bitcoin could work for him. He's very actually. conspiratorial too, yeah, and I yeah. feel like he has sovereign individual mindset. 100%. Yeah, a huge sovereign individual mindset. Yeah. personal responsibility mindset. And then Kim, I'm sure, owns so much Bitcoin just because they're financially smart. Yep. But she's also probably like shilling shit coins like for Instagram money. Yeah, I think she did. I think she got sued, right? Yeah. For doing like super ETH or something. I mean, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it yeah. like literally called that, I think? Yeah. Or like mega ETH? Doesn't sound something good. Like that. Don't buy that. Don't invest <laughs> yeah, in yeah, the it mega was, ETH no. ICO. It was her and then uh, um, like Floyd Mayweather or something. Yeah, Floyd Mayweather got sued. Yeah. And it was like Floyd for, Mayweather like, is dumb. <laughs> It is dumb. He is really dumb. It's incredible. There was there they had, they they had a there was like a morning show that Floyd Mayweather was on, and then the host of the it was like AM like you know morning show, and then the host was like, hey Floyd, why don't you read this children's book? He like surprised him on air, and it is it's bad. Oh, like goodness. Floyd Mayweather is like borderline illiterate. Wow. Yeah. It's did no did he try to read it and couldn't get through it, or was it, was, it like he like refused to? No, he what? like tried to read it and like wow. it was yeah yeah yeah. Oh, really, boy. you got to know your limits. You know, if you're illiterate, like, don't try reading a yeah, book yeah, on yeah, a yeah, yeah, radio yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wow, damn. I did bet he, he's got a lot of Bitcoin. Did he fight Jake Paul? Uh, I don't think that's happened yet. But right? that's happening. Maybe. No, I yeah. think it did happen, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, 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 you're yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, it did happen. Yeah, yeah it did. Yeah, yeah, and that's then, like, right. Yeah. they drawed or something. No, no, I think he won on points. I mean, it was like an ex- exhibition match or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He just beat up some Japanese MMA dude. It was really confusing. There's this like MMA promotion called Ryzen. 
and then they they paid him millions of dollars to have a, like a, a a boxing match with one of their top fighters, and then he he just like embarrassed him. The, wow. the Floyd Mayweather embarrassed this MMA guy because he's not a boxer, and it's like Ryzen, like why did you pay? Floyd Mayweather twenty million dollars to embarrass like your most popular fighter. Like, what were you thinking? You know, so weird. Who knows? You know, yeah. Back on topic. So it's what happens? Time, what happens next, Mark or yeah. Diane or anyone? But I just like I feel I like know. beep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bleep that out. <laughs> First beep beep yeah. beep beep beep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. Do you have predictions? Kind of a little bit. Or I like mean, possible scenarios. I mean, at first off, I think yeah, like just from the get go, like predicting bitcoins for the birds, uh, and anything. I mean, who the fuck knows? The fact that it like this is a situation that's being caused by like a, a select few people making a decision in a room and coming out and like the fucking groundhog and just you know announcing you know seventy five basis points. I mean, it's so ridiculous. It's so absurd. Um, I would not use any margin at all in either direction at all we're in a complete spin zone where price discovery is like <laughs> you know occurring in, in in the live like i wouldn't really you know put too much weight into it um but i think there's a great chance that uh we're gonna have to see a pivot happen really fast um and i think I, people are like seeing the dollar exploding and seeing this and and they're not kind of thinking about what happens next which is all of these central banks pivoting um and what they're trying mm. to do by increasing rates is lowering demand to, to kill inflation, but they're they're actually in, in causing more demand by the dollar going up. So they're they're sort of not creating the situation they really want to, to, to have happen. It's 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 beyond policy error to the point where I think it's like a war like <laughs> policy, you know, to hurt other countries. Like the US has Europe, like they can they can make them do anything that they want, you know, like like you know, from a central bank standpoint, like we have them by the balls. And uh, so I think what kind of happens next is either like a, you know, social agreement of sort of Plaza Accord thing where we figure, figure something out. The Nakamoto Accord. The Nakamoto Accord. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, some sort of like actual kinetic war. But I don't think kinetic war will happen. I don't think either. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I really don't. I feel like states have really kind of chilled out, you know, over the last hundred years the united states yeah and like other states like is japan really gonna go to war again like nah probably not and they were going ham like in in dub, well they have dub, no dub money too. i mean they're like one of the worst off yeah they're not doing great but no. i mean like they could like you know be like yeah you know nationalism again let's go you know i mean they're they're ne- their interest rates already at what like negative 25 basis points i don't know what's going on with that country and interest <laughs> rates in the economy yeah they own like 400 percent of their gdp is like owned by the yeah. treasury i mean it's just absurd i wonder if we're gonna see sort of like a anti-green nationalism from europe that's just like, oh, this like green energy policy has yeah. mm. made us energy insecure and now like everything's super expensive, energy is super expensive. And I wonder if there's going to be a sort of pushback against that. Like, hey, let's tr- like, like, let's. let's I mean, there, nuclear there power is plants. already. It's I just agree. a question of how big that gets. Like there is definitely already the, that sort of movement mm-hmm. in Brexit. Europe. Yeah. There's a Russian Twitch streamer who just tweet, who just streams 24 seven. Uh, their their like gas burner on their stove, and it's like you mad Europeans, and he has like <laughs> and he has like the price of like running it, and it's like one he's it's a, he's like yes, it's only thirty rubles a month to keep this stove on, but it's so many euros to you. Uh, you like this, you Germans? Uh? And th- I mean that's really it. <laughs> See, that's like, why Russia wins. Is Powell gonna just like let Europe like freeze to death? You know what's like, he gonna do? It, Lower rates. And then how does that help Europe? I mean, I mean, it will put a bunch of money into the system and, and make things pump again and people will have money and be able to pay for things. It won't solve the actual energy crisis, but it will like get people. I mean, people right now, like their energy bills are just like going so parabolic. They're like thousands of euros a month mm. for like very basic limited power. You know, I mean, it's completely unsustainable. They're like capping people's... Uh, energy bills for a month at like 2,500 euro. So mm. it's like, you know, it's just, we're seeing price control in the energy markets already. Mm. I just, I feel like maybe I just was out of the loop, but it's just crazy how fast it feels like to me that Europe is just so obviously NGMI. 
Like, mm. I feel like I didn't yep. think that way. Like, I didn't think like, oh, wow, Europe is fucked. Like, a year ago, two years ago, even. And it just feels so... I wonder, I wonder if we're seeing sort of like a... Like a like that the narrative arc is that a lot of the very innovative um, sort of uh, risk-taking Europeans went to America, right? And they sort of left behind people who were sort of like more conservative, like less less taking chances, et, et cetera, which then leads to this like sort of long-term stagnation of Europe. Hmm. And like the current day is actually like playing out that like influx of that outflux of um, Europeans to America, you know, hundreds of years ago. And that like shaped the national character of Europe to be like less, you know, kind of go getter. That's an interesting theory. Huh. I think from the yeah. side of like uh, just people perceiving Europe as being better than it is. Like, mm. I think there's like a level of like Obama era smugness that used to be very like, Oh, I'm going to move to Canada if things get bad here. Like, I'm hearing people say that, though. I hear a lot of people yeah, saying like, that, like, the past, like, six months, especially, like, it's popped up. Uh, and I know people who are kind of following through on the, like, yeah, we're getting out of here. Right. It's just, I mean, yeah, there's definitely still, like, a liberal flavor of, like, that sort of sentiment. But yeah. I, I think it's, like, it, I mean, Canada, I would not want to live in Canada at this point. Like, Europe, as I said, NGMI, like, I think obviously there still are people that are in that mindset of like, Oh yeah, I'll move to Canada anywhere. is better than here. But like, it does feel like the era of that being the dominant kind of like, uh, like smug liberal disposition is like waning over time, mm. at least, even if there are people who are still just like stuck in that same loop. But I don't know. Yeah. I just like, yeah. When did, when did Europe fail so bad? I mean, maybe it is just a gradual process over generations and, whatever i but. think it's just really been brought to a head by bad energy policy the thing that's mm. really confusing to me is that they that their sort of green energy policy is a, a manifest that they've that that if you look at what they're saying is like okay they're trying to be green and trying to be sustainable and then if you're looking at what they're doing it's just massively increased dependence on natural gas from 100%. abroad. Mm -hmm. There's like a complete disconnect from what they're saying and what they're doing. You know, they're like, uh, like they're leading with, okay, we've got to turn off our nuclear power plants and we've got to do this, blah, 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 blah. But then what's actually happening is, is just complete energy dependence on the outside. And I, I don't understand how that's like, how that has been politically sustainable for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's totally insane. I mean, also I think we're missing like, the world wars you know i think that kind of messed with europe a little bit uh mm. that was a huge part of it uh and then also like <clears throat> currency manipulation like the london gold pool and like all the stuff that happened with like charles de gaulle in france and the u.s going off uh the gold standard like that was a lot of like that's kind of why i, I love that we're doing all this in the wartime bitcoin stuff it's like the Fed's de Powell's decisions look like an absolute mistake unless you look at them as sort of like a policy of war, like against Europe and against, you know, these other important, you know, like, you know, foreign exchange uh, currencies. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how I look at it. Do you think like we like the U.S. will ever engage in like physical warfare ever again? I mean, every day. Well, I mean, like, not counting like it doesn't count when you go into some like poor country and just like. Right. fuck them over like that doesn't count like, like that's i mean not war. i'm talking about like war like on u.s i mean i guess besides the civil war and revolutionary war there like hasn't really mm. oh like on u.s soil yeah, like do you think that the u.s will ever like engage in like real war like on its own Ground. like in a way that affects america like will we be invaded or, or just attacked? just like in a way that actually feels like we're going to war guys and like we're gonna have to sacrifice and people are like lots of people are gonna die and it's gonna be a whole thing i i I mean, unless it happens like really soon, like, no, I really, I, I kind of don't. I, I, yeah. I think, I think like the ground warfare is sort of a, a I, I don't know. It's going to be really hard to sort of manipulate and propagandize enough people to be like, you need to go do this thing and risk your life when we're all so connected. It's like, we can like Skype with someone over there or wherever we would be fighting and mm -hmm. be like, do you want to kill me? No. Okay. I don't want to kill you. Cool. Whereas like all we had was like, go to the movies and watch like a, a clip of like, they want to kill you so bad. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, let's go kill them. It's like, I don't know. I, I think that the war machines like um, ability to sort of like 
you know, corrupt what's the most important thing you should be doing with your life. Like in that moment, I think like that ability is really lost. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean is like, do you think like, right. And I, I agree with you. I think the answer is no. Like, I don't know that America will ever be like, unif. maybe if like aliens came, you know, and we were like, oh shit. If aliens came though, we'd just be fucked. Like the chances are is that their technology level will be so much higher right, I'm than not us that they win. just like I'm just saying like that, that oh, I think win. would be. <laughs> this is wartime Bitcoin. <laughs> you don't think we'd fucking beat aliens? Absolutely Resilience not. Resilience of the human spirit. <laughs> Haven't you read any sci-fi book? That's the yeah. special thing about us. Yeah, I have. And America always so cool. wins in the books I read. Yeah. I are, mean, listen, are aliens if aliens... Real? Is, 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 is that yeah, happening? Yeah, baby. Uh, I don't know. No. I've, I've never there's met been, one. I don't know. I, I don't Probably know. I see not. smart people going like, oh, like, look, like there's like the, the Navy, the Navy, the, some, you know, you know, Air Force agency has this like, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like logo <laughs> with like planes going across. It's like the Naval Intelligence it's, people. Yeah. And it literally has a UFO. Yeah, UFO and it yeah. literally has a flying saucer. But, but wait, but. You need to like the the military, like their internal like design culture is fucking insane. Yeah. If you go look at like yeah, DARPA yeah. like PowerPoint presentations, they're fucking bonkers. They're so bad. They're just like terrible clip art and like weird ass fonts that don't don't match and like all this shit. Like if they put a UFO on something, it doesn't mean anything. They're not doing anything Mi- intentional. Is, is mm. it, uh, are they bad at design? Because it's just a bunch of pe- lo- like like old people who don't know how to, how to use computers. Like what's going on? They're there? just pretending to look incompetent. No, I think they want to touch them. Oh, DARPA. Well, like no, these they're are good like, at some things. <laughs> well, no, DARPA isn't. I guess no, DARPA aren't the people producing these presentations that I'm these powerpoints okay, that I'm making fair. fun of. These are like internal like army, navy, like okay. intelligence, like. Yeah, they're they're run of the mill intelligence. I mean, I I think low intelligence. Low. Mm -hmm. We sort of we sort of been talking about a lot of governments like they're like these intelligent, agentive things that have ideas and agendas, and I don't think they are. I think they're really dumb. No, I I think they want attention, and they do this to cause drama, and they like think it makes them seem more mysterious and like, oh my god, like what are these institutions doing? Like when they do little things that like. I just think it's about branding. Like, honestly, I think they do these little things and they leak the, like the UFO stuff, especially like, I think they just leak stuff like that because it makes them seem like secretive and important and so cool. But the reality is that they're just like flops and they haven't like really found anything cool personally. I mean, I could be wrong, like, but that's what I think. It makes sense. But I do think it's interesting that we were like, the way we got to this talk was like, what would unify us in America to like go to war again? And we were like, well, aliens, maybe. And it's like, it's kind of interesting that now it's yeah. like, now that's all the army intelligence, like, it like, they're like trickling out alien stuff, you know? I mean, I think that's a pretty classic conspiratorial trope that it's like, there's this yeah. like blue beam project where well, it's like, a, they're going to um, fake an alien invasion to like unify people. Well, that's what, that's what Watchmen is about, isn't it? Is, is, is the guys trying to fake like um, an attack from, he's not an yeah. alien, but he's like a super man type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. An Ubermensch. Yeah, and he's an American. Ubermensch. Uh, I mean, Dein blauer Ubermensch. <laughs> yes, I know this. We'll see what what Ubermensch means, but also kind of like not really in the context of the book, like Nietzsche was talking about. I don't know. I know what you mean. I get the. I get the. Meaning. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> A war. I feel like like the only. Yeah, I guess. Well, no, I, I was China, right? China. Like China. yeah, we could China war with China. 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 <laughs> China. Chief of a China officer. China. Hey yo. China. <laughs> so like I yeah, a war with China would be I mean like I Taiwan is is that's sort of interesting. I honestly think there's a lot of Americans that would just be like, you know what, if China wants to rule us, that's fine. I don't want to leave my apartment anyway. What are like, you talking about? Right. Those aren't Americans, but they do live I agree with you. <laughs> but that's not American. Americans in name only. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I, don't, I don't think like there's any I don't know I feel like people are so desensitized to like political drama that like yeah you can like get them riled up on for posting but like to actually go to war to actually sacrifice something like I think people would sooner bow to China well yeah because like, you, you, l- like not uh, every uh, American unless my material daily life has significantly changed I don't want to go to war which would really really change my daily life like it's a lot harder to just get like a super burrito whenever i want to if i'm at war Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly yeah and like you know you don't get to kill people on day to day you know (sighs) i'm just kidding you you could do it if you want to do i don't know but um yeah yeah, that's a good point yeah yeah but like i don't know like 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 if suddenly i i woke up and like i like china was my dad uh, (laughs) um like (laughs) 
<laughs> I hated that day of middle school, you know? You You're wake up one day, me. China's your dad. Come yeah. on, dad, I want to do Falun Gong. <laughs> I love Shen Yun. They do acrobatics. <laughs> Um, I was I was in uh, I was in Dolores Park today and um, I had my earbuds in so I didn't really hear what the lady said but she came up and wa- clearly wanted me to like sign something or like do something and it just mm. said like um, uh, something yeah, sh- stop the communist party and I was like I'm vibing right now I can't, <laughs> <laughs> can't do this I don't think signatures are gonna stop that communist party yeah you know? I don't know maybe yeah. it wasn't signatures <laughs> maybe she wanted some sats I didn't really listen but yeah it was it, it's 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 always interesting to to see that kind of like ambient culture I mean I've been seeing this since I was a kid in San Francisco like like or you know in the Bay Area like um, uh, people with posters like like um, uh, doomsday watch out for the Chinese government Uh, potential topic change Um, China CBDC what's going on do you know that the Chinese uh, uh, like Constitution equivalent was written in a Tong house in San Francisco's China What's a Tong house uh, oh yeah, like a benevolent association. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, like an association, usually an association of like Chinese immigrants from a particular exactly. location in China. Yep. Start like an association in America for like the ben- the benefit of people. Yeah, there. like a like early like kind of almost like a like a part social club, part union, almost like kind of a men's club. Yeah, sort of a yeah. Freemason sort of stuff. Thing. Or yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it's funny when you mentioned Mario sixty four earlier. I was like, have you guys ever seen like the like. The whole castle of Mario 64 is like all Freemason tropes and the black and white really? checkered wow. thing. And there's a big sun in the middle. Mm, yeah. And like you go in the paintings and there's a camera that follows you around. There's some really, there's some good, it's a good, it's a good rabbit so, hole. So, okay, but like, so who, and this is just, I'm sorry, I'm derailing. We can talk about the yeah, whatever. We can talk Chinese about China. currency. We'll talk about China. But just Mark, like, I feel like I'm always trying to understand. <laughs> why do you think like shit like that? Like, like why I would you even say that? No, I'm not <laughs> saying that, but I want to understand saying like why like like who do you think is like planning the mario 64 free right uh, i know like, it, it's so absurd it's so that's, absurd oh yeah do you think that like miyamoto-san is like that's uh, right that's what i'm asking like, i mean that that's the thing it's like uh, so so th- this is where i'm kind of stuck on a lot of this like because the freemason shit is just like it's crazy my, how, uh, how my, my grandfather was a, was a freemason wow. very cool yeah my my uncle chip whose name is now Tarchin Kelsang because he's a Tibetan Buddhist monk. He stole some like medical supplies from the school that he was at. And then uh, my grandmother, my grand, he was like in trouble with like the principal or whatever. And my grandfather like went to like meet with the principal to like, you know, talk things Get over. Get a handshake. They, they, and my, my dad was there. Uh, my, who was like younger and like they went to the office, they shook hands and they talked, they just like exchanged pleasantries and then uh, my he le- my grandfather left, and my dad was like, "Yeah, you guys didn't really talk about anything." And my grandfather was like, "Yeah, no, it's it's taken care of." And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "Yeah, he's a Freemason. He's a Mason. It's fine." Yeah, they just they felt it when they shook hands, right. and then it, it was all good. It was wow. taken right. care of. And yeah. so, so some of this like symbolism stuff, it's like I'm I'm really curious now, like how. Like if it, how much of it is really actually like a secret society that controls stuff? And I think how for much something of like it, Mario, I think in a lot of media it's just accidental. I mean, like like the two things that come to mind for me are like um, uh, uh, Evangelion, and that there's a bunch of like Christian imagery in that mm. uh, in in that show. And S- they ask them afterwards, like, "What well, what does it all mean?" And they're like, "I don't know. It's just like foreign. We thought it was kind of cool. We put it in our TV show." Also, like, That's there's re- like, no, come on, there's that the, the, like the trope no, of Evangelion is like all old Bible tropes, like Adam and Lilith, and no, it's, it's super it's not, heavy. It's not that they, it's not that they don't know what they're doing. It's a, yeah. like, oh yeah, I just saw some like Bible stuff. I thought it'd be cool, you know, and yeah, no aesthetic. deep meaning. Got you it. Know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, uh, the the other thing that comes to mind for me is um the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Are mm. you familiar with these guys, like Alistair Crowley? The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Yeah, it's like some wizards in England. Yeah, um, but yeah, um, yeah I don't know, it's just a <laughs> bunch of people like hanging out. They're like, we do magic, um, uh, and uh, like like they did a lot of like like Freemason kind of like imagery, and they had like like hierarchies, and you could only know like someone's magical name mm. if you were like a higher the homo-erotic rank. Homoerotic than them. Order of the Golden Dawn. Well, Alistair Crowley, <laughs> like lo- like one of the great power bottoms of Western history. <laughs> no, really, it's true. He, no, he like lo- like a big thing with him is. It, is like his magic was in his butt like like it was uh, yeah his sure. part of his rituals was trip, I think. yeah I, w- I wouldn't be surprised uh, alistair crowley was kind of an odd man out in, in in them he he from what i understand was, was sort of like man you guys are are, are kind of lame you guys are just trying to hang out i'm trying to do real magic 
Um, but yeah, like they did a lot of like Freemason stuff, and like yeah, it was because like cool secret society, but partially ju- they were just like we want to be cool and secret too. They just thought it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think it's like both. Like I mean, very clearly these these societies have played huge roles in in, in the way our world is. What's formed. your number one That's secret society? True. Your favorite Templars, Freemasons. I mean, I think Freemasons Illuminati. have like the closest like as like. Um, you know, like I grew up in a town that had like a big Freemason museum in the mm. middle of it, you know, wow. which was the where the Revolutionary War started, interestingly enough. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 there's, it's just like you get in, like, I, I don't know how much of it is coincidence, how much of it is actual, um, or how, how much of it is like, you know, maybe like someone like myself, like I have no association with any secret society at all whatsoever. Sure. Period. I swear I don't on my soul. I don't. But, I know a lot of the symbols and the imagery and the numbers and all that. And I'd love to sprinkle them in. Like if I'm editing a song and like, I'm going to make it end on 33 instead of 32. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to do that every time. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Freemason. I'm not literally. Um, (laughs) But I, but I love sprinkling in all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So how much is it just like, is it Miyamoto being like, Oh, I've, you know, I've learned a lot of shit by, you Mm -hmm. know, learning about you. Maybe he's, he's obviously an incredibly brilliant, connected, amazing, smart person. Maybe he just, connected all these tropes and decided to play with them and sprinkle them in as sort of like a wink to other people going through like you know the enlightenment journey or the great work journey of just yeah. being like here you go keep going you know these are these tropes keep going right because like i don't really does masonry exist in a, in a way right now that actually like is controlling you know very specific things like i literally have no idea yeah but it very clearly has like a cultural trope that you can see through art and history and you can like see people that are and weren't you know and totally so Diane, do you believe in any conspiracy theories? Oh, uh, or like I don't know. what, or like beliefs that They're you hold that like the frogs. where you think that something <laughs> is the case that is other people think is just totally crazy. I don't know. I'm not that conspiratorial. Um, I think it's partially because like I I just ha- I haven't dug into a lot of it. Oh, you know what? One I kind of believe, and I forget a lot of the. Um, evidence for it but i remember like researching it and i came to a conclusion the moon is cheese uh maybe <laughs> yeah, i'm still on the fence there right, right, right. um uh uh jfk uh was shot by the secret service by accident like the, oh. the bullet that actually blew up his head mm. um was uh some some uh guy with like uh itchy trigger finger he he yeah. he, he oh was, yeah he like, was in like in the moment he was like oh was god the, there's, the there's some gunfire yeah the limousine behind them he heard this. 16 the bullet was different yeah. yeah yeah um and um uh courtney totally killed kurt yeah, yeah. oh damn i, 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 I <laughs> yeah I, you think so I, I fully believe that one actually yeah okay yeah. yeah i don't know anything about it honestly i got into nirvana like this week <laughs> back to china pretty good uh, yeah i like them CBDC. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, right, they yeah. essentially they they essentially already have Courtney one Love. in the form of like WeChat payments. Yeah. Right. I mean, like like WeChat. What's what's the company that runs WeChat? Alibaba. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or right. Uh, maybe it's. Is WeChat it Tencent, is like Tencent that does that? Oh, Tencent. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. I mean, so it's it, they have these weird like like sort of like very strong like public private partnerships. So it seems like they already really have a CBDC. Right, sure. that that like they have this like controlled digital. Currency. I mean, we already have one. I mean, this idea of like no. a digital dollar. It's like we Where's, everything we use dollar? is a digital dollar. Yeah, well, there's not going to be. A, I don't think there will be a specific which digital dollar either. USDC, I but, think, but is it, the CBDC. But oh, it's not a CBDC though, right? I mean, it's not like it doesn't. Why would the government want to have a government issued money when they can own a corporation and have way more reserved rights as a private company? It's like I don't think they DARPA do own that doing Life Log versus Facebook. They'll get they way more data information by buying it off of a private company, which is why Palantir yeah. is a private company. Yeah. Mm. It's just like smart business, dog. I got a, I got a, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I tried exactly. to work at Palantir after I uh, got out of school. Really? Yeah. I, I applied. A lot of techies I know think it's cool. Yeah. What? I was just going to ask, who I do really you don't think, think is, about it. who cool. do you think is My most, aunt. most likely cool. right, to be cool. a spook of this group? Sorry, what's the question? God. Who is most likely a spook in this group? <laughs> Wartime Bitcoin. Yeah. We're, we're now going internal. You think me? I think it's you Casey. You know too much. I think it's me too. Yeah, yeah it's it obviously Casey. Yeah. Casey. Yeah, and I think, I think it's yeah. like, 
I'm like trying to like build up cred with like this podcast and like oh ordinals is just this kooky thing right but it's actually like, who's funding ordinals this, is like you know? an attack on bitcoin yeah ordinals is yeah. like it's no we're just gonna do this yeah it really destroys fungibility <laughs> i love that i can't wait I for someone to clip you saying exactly that <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It. i'm yeah. a spook yeah. i'm an enemy of bitcoin mm. uh, yeah i hate bitcoin i hate freedom i do so i have a i have a deep theory that um there's only one china and it's it's mainland China. And it is my daddy. <laughs> I have a There's deep, only one China, China and it's dad. Taiwan. And no the, dads, no masters. Mainland mainland Taiwan needs to be returned <laughs> to, the, to the motherland. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been demonetized. I have already. a deep theory that Casey is an MK Ultra uh, plant, and he doesn't realize that Ordinals is going to destroy Bitcoin. <laughs> and at some point, they're going to turn him on, and he's going to like right. completely switch, and like my life will be thrown into chaos, and like it'll just be a fucking immediately mess. to your life. Well, you, you said know, sometimes right when, to your life. when we're like out and I'm like shilling ordinals, you're like, well, it's kind of like Casey's like an MK Ultra, <laughs> like yeah. stooge or whatever. And you're like my handler. Yeah. I feel like his handler sometimes. Like wow. sometimes I feel like I'm like, like I have to guide him and make sure that he doesn't like accidentally like die on or the like way go to like crazy. fulfilling his Do you, have, his do you ever think purpose. you've had like a handler in your like someone in your space that you was like, oh, that's weird. That person came into my life and like o- helped only, me. In only at my most deranged <laughs> moments. Yeah, well, that's so when a handler no, would come, right? Yeah, yeah. no, but, but not right? when I'm in my yeah. right mind. Do right? I believe such a thing? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're just, that's it's wartime the, Bitcoin, the M- Casey. That's what, yeah. MK, what, is, what is but MK Ultra, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I said I grew up in a fucking Mason town, you know? What the hell do they do? You ever dug into the Carbonari? They're they're another cool secret. Like nice chicken really like Carbonara. Yes, yeah, good stuff. Carbonara. Delicious. <laughs> Did we all were we all gonna make that joke? Yeah, what yeah, do you guys yeah, yeah. yeah, the new Italian Prime Minister, Guido Marinara? <laughs> <laughs> War John Bitcoin. <laughs> the new name of this podcast is Pasta Slut. <laughs> I'm your host. Guido Marinara, what was it? Covered in all of Was it like Guido or, or, or It can't Gino? really be Guido because that's sort of like a slur. It's got to be it? like, yeah. Shit. Isn't Guido a slur? We can make it one. I think it's like reclaimed. It's, it's like, reclaimed. can we reclaim it? Or uh, I'm it not reclaiming it. it. I'm not Italian. <laughs> Let's bring it back, yeah. But like Jersey Shore, they call each other Guidos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, okay, yeah. So There's like, much worse words I can think of. Yeah. Rigatoni Marinara. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you're safe on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to try to reclaim cracker, but Aaron, I told him Aaron no. told me no. It's not allowed. <laughs> well, it's also just not like an aesthetic word. No, like, it exactly. Doesn't, it, it doesn't it's sound that cool. cool. Yeah. It doesn't sound good. No. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, but to each their own. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> right, the I can't decide for you whether you reclaim cracker. Like, I, I, I would never presume. Like, I can't tell you what a casserole is. Like, you know, there's just certain things. Like, yeah. it's you not can't tell us what one is. Yeah, I'm just like, incapable of. Uh, no, I, 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 how could I ever like explain to you? you perception know, like, is reality. <laughs> Mark, what's your? Reality. Mark, Nothing what's your? True. I mean, totally off topic. What's your ethnic background? My ethnic background. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, to the MK Ultra theory, I'm adopted. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On the twenty first of the month. Wow. Uh, that that's irrelevant. <clears throat> uh, I am uh Guido. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Irish, boop, Italian. Boop, yeah, boop, sorry. Boop. Irish, Italian, German, and Polish. Mm. Polish Jew. Uh, so I have a few theories about this actually. So one of the, my birth parents were like, he okay, need, now that you're now that okay, I he forgot needs that to you be were adopted. Raised. That really ups the spook. Yeah, MK Ultra. Totally, oh, I agree. Yeah, you guys I'm, are in guys. I'm with you. I, I agree. <laughs> There's probably some repressed split personality in here. You know, you're gonna get activated one day. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and you're you're inside. You know, Bitcoin magazine in media. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna take the whole I mean, thing down I, from the inside. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, they're doing a terrible job. If I'm supposed to be doing like anti uh, CIA awareness stuff, you know, uh, like and probably right, you're right. you're you're putting all sorts of like crazy hidden messages into Bitcoin magazine, which is activating sleeper cells all over we the world. Exactly. We actually are working on a, a cipher of sorts to uh, uh, we're gonna mm. hide some things in the magazine. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Because so you, the founding you're fathers, fulfilling your purpose. The you fathers think you're doing used, something else. Like Hamilton, like used ciphers and stuff. Like in their like letters to each other, they like used cryptographic ciphers. Mm. It's so wow. cool. Yeah, it's so badass. Um, it's fun. 
But are you Jewish? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> no so awkward. That was, the, um, that was what re- Casey was trying to ask. To that. Yeah, no. Uh, so I'm so Jewish, which is my, why I asked. My, uh, I'm allowed to ask. I know my birth mother certainly uh, was Roman Catholic, and uh, when I was adopted, like one of the like conditions, if you will, was like need to be raised by a Roman Catholic. Really? So I have a, a, a like a hunch that like perhaps maybe my father was Jewish, and then like got pregnant with my mom and like her family was like, you're not having a Jewish bull. You know, what do you, what is this? And, mm-hmm. you, and obviously, you know, can't, you know, abort the baby. They got a Catholic. I have it. And, uh, so I was given up for adoption and for perhaps that's what it is. But I, but I, I mean, I, uh, father was Polish. Mm. Um, but as far as I know, they were both Catholic. Yeah. Mm. As far as I know. Yeah. I don't really know why I ask. I don't. I don't have any. I'm not going anywhere with this. Yeah, yeah. No, he yeah. just wanted to know. He's just curious. <laughs> just curious. <laughs> it is uh, what Rosh Hashanah right now. Yeah. Is that happy wow. Happy New Year, yeah. everybody. May your, name, may your names be inscribed in the book of life. Wow. Yeah. Is that what it is? Inscribed in the book of Dude, life. I barely know any of this stuff. I don't know how it works. But yeah, I'm I, tomorrow. Rabbi Rabbi Mendy Blank, shout out Emeryville Chabad, is pressuring me to go blow the chauffeur or hear the chauffeur be blown. That's the uh, that's below the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's like it's like a horn that's made out of a a, a, a ram's horn or like a sheep's horn. No, oh, I thought you meant chauffeur. No, like the driver You're go blow of the, the car. chauffeur. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's yeah, really trying to pressure me to blow I'm the drive chauffeur. I'm going to temple and then blow the guy. That it's drove an orthodox <laughs> Jewish yeah. thing. You got to you know writing in the book of life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's always pressuring me to do like more Jewish stuff. Like one time I was hanging out with him and I, he knew that I was going to go like his job. Though? Yeah, like, yeah. It's his job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, but okay. it's really funny. Like I showed up and I was just, you know, visiting him for a little bit. And then I was going to go uh, eat dinner with a friend and he knew that I was going to go eat like non kosher food, which for, for Orthodox Jews, they really believe that like kosher food is like pure and is like better for you or like mm-hmm. spiritually better for you. And so he kept like pushing food on me i was like oh, i'm not really that hungry and he's like yeah oh, you want some chicken i was like oh sure yeah some chicken he's like oh you want a little loaf of bread and i was like i was a like a loaf of bread yeah and i was like what are you doing and it's like oh wait you're trying to fill me up so i eat like less non-kosher food which like will dirty my soul wartime bitcoin's going on outside. yeah wartime bitcoin is absolutely going on outside it's popping off can the audience hear that there was some screeching of tires i don't know i the, wonder the, the, the yeah, pound dollar parody must have just happened and they're uh, outside yeah, doing yeah. Uh, i feel like we need donuts for the 1.00 it's, it's all collapsing right now we need some sort of like live like uh, like financial markets yeah you know in the background just like red yeah, everything yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. say you could just take like a red sharpie and just draw a line down I think it would be more or less the same, except Bitcoin, though, right? Because I mean, Bitcoin's bombed. just kind of cruising along. Bitcoin has like been going nowhere for months, right? It's like in this yep. like fifteen. It's just in the spin zone. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I, it just takes time. Yeah, you know, I'm bullish. I, I, every like everybody that was super bullish uh, when it was made no sense to be is now like so bearish, and I think that's like sort of telling that sentiment has changed. I don't and understand. there's only a few macro people that I really like that I like read all their things and follow. And like pretty much everyone is like, yeah, like everyone's being very short sighted. Like mm. there might be like a flash crash, but like what happens next is inevitable that there will be more money printed. Mm. Like it just has to happen, you know? What What's your guys's okay next uh, uh, upgrade for Bitcoin? What do you want to see? Smaller blocks. Really? You're in the Luke Dashier camp. I am. No base layer transparency. Smaller blocks. <laughs> wartime Bitcoin. Ideal money. The Nashian orientation. Take it. Take the Nash pill. <laughs> uh, well, when you say no, no base layer uh, um, transparency, do, does that mean just like more private transactions? What do you, no, what do you mean? Less the, private transactions. Or, less. Um, less private. Yeah. Trans- he okay. doesn't mean that. Sorry, He's no, just trolling. No, no, you're trolling. I, Bitcoin is a settlement network, and I think where it's going to go if we're going to get to a place where the fee market is sustaining it, uh, <clears throat> that means we're. I pr- most likely probably going to need smaller blocks potentially. Why? To increase the likelihood of the fee market taking over the security model of the system. Uh, and if it does get to that point where that is true, then it's going to be really be used as a settlement network, pretty much primarily and pretty much exclusively by like the super super elite of the system. Like I'm talking a point like oh one percent. Like when a when a when a transaction like when a satoshi is more than an hour's wage. Like this is like beyond our lifetime. 
um, it's going to price out 99.9% of the users of the system, uh, in which case you are going to want total transparency of, 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 of those systems as a, as, a, you know, a, as a minority user. Then they'll just coin join. Those sophisticated actors can just do can just do coin joins on the base layer. Totally, but it'll be so much easier to you know we can still do all the same chain analysis stuff they're doing to us. Not if they're coin joining. Sure, you can. You can. I mean, if, there's every, nothing... if everything on the base layer is like just these like huge coin joins, no, there's no transparency that doesn't afford you any transparency. Not that you want it, but you don't get it. I mean, if it's a small enough user set and you can see where like and kind of estimate generally balances like but there's imagine if every user to if every transaction today on Bitcoin was just like these giant coin joins, giant coin joins. And then like basically in, in some sort of like crazy end state of Bitcoin in that like future, like, OK, we have the lightning network, right? Yeah. So all of the lightning network stuff is 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 private. I mean, it, it can be right, but it sh- it's, it's, it, it's not. It's it's very private. I mean, compared to on chain Bitcoin, I mean. So you have all these entities like kind of transacting when it's at scale, uh, uh, and we have uh, I don't know. I I I, I, the bigger it gets, the more private it gets. I know. I agree. I don't think Lightning is is actually nearly as private as people say it is on 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 the regular. No, I mean senders have very good privacy on the Lightning network. Receivers don't. Mm Hmm. And but if a receiver, if, but what if there's ne- nefarious nodes in the system, where this is wartime Bitcoin, like you can absolutely yeah. count packets, you can absolutely like yeah, it, no, it, I don't you think can. I, I don't think I don't think you get really really. Good. I don't think you learn a lot of information. So imagine you're mostly like you're doing like lightning transactions, and then when you want to open and close channels or like move money around, you're doing like giant on chain coin joins. No transparency in the system. Super elite can do whatever they want. Uh, I mean, I w- it, maybe Bitcoin will get to that point where where the, all of those amenity sets are strong enough where it's complete. But I, I mean, I don't think we're at that point now. And we're talking about far, far future. Right. right. I agree. But I'm saying, should we actually be actively trying to get to that point where we where we create the tools that actually allow base layer transparency if we assume that in 80 to 140 years, uh, you know, th- there will be such a small set of people that will actually be able to afford to make a transaction well i think pri- well you know we differ on this one i think but like i think privacy I, is I, good. I don't think i've made up my mind 100 percent. i'm just it's like i think it's absolutely something to consider going back to uh the the thing with like smaller blocks as as kind of like a boost for the the fee market that almost feels like a bearish take to me like like um uh the, the fact that we need to do it um, or that 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 like uh, it would be like a prerequisite to boost the fee market. Like like that seems like uh, bearish on the fee market getting there on its own. Like if you were like a true bull, you would think that ordinals would do that for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I, I ordinals absolutely... are intentionally highly inefficient. Take a lot of block space to move ordinals around. Uh, no, I, I I I think Bitcoin absolutely can sustain itself eventually. Of course, I'm just saying I think it's actually more likely. If if like what would be the next changes? I think it's more likely that we actually would want to decrease the block size it's easier to actually pull off and i think we're more likely going to want would rather smaller blocks than bigger blocks like right, we, we clear the mempool all the time like the mempool is constantly clear i think though if you look at like long-term usage statistics like basically bitcoin usage has been up and to the right yeah and we've got a probably a few more halvings before it becomes really critical that we have a fee market right like i mean we're at like 6.25 we can probably go down like a couple halvings maybe so like I mean, 10 years like a decade i mean how many more users will be able to hold at utxos though no no but we're just talking about development of the fee market yeah right so in 10 years are blocks going to be empty i don't think so i think in 10 years blocks are going to be pretty full i i agree I'm just saying I think it's more likely that we will have a soft fork to restrict the block size than we would have a fork to increase the block size. Sure. That's all. Uh, you said you said something about um, uh, users aren't going to have their own UTXOs. Yeah, like th- so, so that makes a lot of sense. Let's talk scalability. Uh, scalability. Like, uh, how are we going to scale to a billion users? Well, well are, are, are we, we're not really in a position to do, to do that now, right? So what's it going to take? I mean, definitely second layer solutions. I mean, I think Lightning's fantastic. But it does have a lot of stuff that needs to be done to it, of course. Mm. Yeah, but like, um, but but even then, like, you like to open and close, uh, like you got to do some amount of on-chain stuff. Yeah, like still sharing. Can we UTXOs. open enough channels? Yeah, sh- sharing UTXOs. But like, uh, can we open enough channels that like you know every person or like you know every family has like 
uh, no, some channel of not without or like batched opening channels. If we tried yeah. to open a channel for every citizen on the globe, it would mm. take us like hundreds of years. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I think probably not everybody is going to have their own UTXO. No, I don't yeah, think that. It's just and, not and it's also, impossible. Like, yeah. like, like having your own, being like, I mean, I the word sovereign is like so corny, right? But being like a sovereign Bitcoin user where you control your own keys, like we're even even if not everybody does that increase increasing the number of people who are sovereign bitcoin users is such a huge uh betterment is 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 way better than the current state of affairs where nobody Absolutely. is sovereign everybody's on a bank everybody's on paypal right the sovereign entities are like paypal not even visa or mastercard they're just weird merchant networks but like sort of the banks you know but they're subject to a lot of like regulation so they're not even really independent actors so i think just like even if not everybody owns their own utxo if everybody's using like you know has their pick of different like uh like custodial wallets that they can choose from obviously i would like more people to have right. their own utxos but, but they need access to the inflation rate that's the important thing the inflation so you, rate yeah like, like you want they want access to bitcoin's monetary policy yeah, yeah but yeah. they can get access to that without actually owning a utxo that which is possible right uh with I mean, I mean, you were you were talking earlier about like fediments and you know, there's like charming, you know, and there's liquid, there's other other federated solutions. Um, I think Lightning makes a lot of sense and has a has a, a big push behind it. Um, but I do think, yeah, I mean, opening a lot of channels will be will be difficult. But I, I don't know. I mean, I'm certainly not a scale. I would say scaling Bitcoin is one of the the areas I know the least uh, in. I've thought about it a lot, but it's just so complicated and, and really hard. Um, so yeah, hard to say. I, no, I'm 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 very bullish on Bitcoin. Um, I'm just like in, just in terms of like <clears throat> if I had to pick like mathematically which which way I think we would actually go. I think it's more likely that we would lean towards smaller blocks than ever actually having bigger blocks. Personally, oh, I don't know. I think I think we're gonna get to persistently full blocks and very high fees. And then I think that that's going to, I, I don't know if that's going to drive us towards bigger blocks, but I think it might drive us towards adoption of like uh, great, more efficiency. So for example, like cross input signature aggregation, where all of the signatures in a Bitcoin transaction uh, can be aggregated. And also things like there's something called like half aggregation of signatures, where you could have all of the signatures in a block get aggregated and basically take up half as much, half as much space, um, stuff like that. There, there probably is a lot of stuff that we can do before we, we make blocks bigger, but I think we're going to be like high fees, got to increase efficiency such that fees come down. Yeah. I, I just think so much. I, it's like, it seems so much like very clearly it needs to be a layer two scaling solution that it, any efficiencies made on the base layer will like, you know, obviously exponentially help on second layer, <clears throat> but I, I would say, I mean, I, I would say generally the scaling Bitcoin model is 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 off chain generally, right? For sure. Yeah. 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 But obviously, you know, the on chain is what sets the whole the whole the whole shebang. So, yeah. I don't know. Small gonna... blocks, transparency. Um, what is uh, Bitcoin community? What is Bitcoin culture missing? Like, what is there? Because like we're all Chicks. kind of like cultural. Yes, that's Smaller what ordinals blocks. are doing. Ordinal dad is bringing the ordinal chicks. <laughs> the ordinal to, hose. It's it's the only uh, 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 women dominated NFT implementation that I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> I was in like a I was in like a clubhouse or like a Twitter space or something, and I said something about like the women of ordinals <laughs> and then somebody was like bro i don't believe you know it's like if only you knew <laughs> yeah and wasn't um a uh, 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 friend of the bay area bitcoiners d plus plus wasn't she also in there did she corroborate you that's right yeah she yeah, corroborated yeah, me. She, yeah she, she, she was the one who said about something it, yeah. about like the women of ordinals yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, honestly i think that bitcoin i th i think that i would like bitcoin to be something that lots of people feel good about adopting and so I think that like fun and art is something that will help that. I think that like fun art existing on Bitcoin and, and, and there being like these really interesting, cool, like cultural things happening on Bitcoin will make people like it. I think that like art and NFTs. Kanye are, getting into Bitcoin is going to be good for the culture. It's going to mm -hmm. be good for the community. Uh, I don't know, good for the community, but like it's going to be. Kanye ordinal NFTs. Kanye ordinal yeah. NFTs, l like um, uh, l like a Yeezy drop that you can only buy with Bitcoin. Imagine didn't, what that would do. Didn't Kanye do like a famous piece that was like, 
It was just like a piece of paper that he wrote on it, and it was like, "Don't ask me to make an NFT or something." Like mm. He like released a, like a meta piece that was like, "Don't ask me to do that." Did somebody We're make an NFT of him? I, He'll I, just I do it when so. he's ready. Yeah, I assume I, I, I immediately I it was know. an <laughs> NFT. Yeah, like within minutes. Um, yeah. I think the culture. I think the culture is moving in this direction already, but I think the culture needs to embrace more anti-government sentiment, like overall. Mm. Which culture? Love it. Like the mainstream culture. Yes. I think like totally the mainstream, yeah. like yeah. everyone yes. kind of feels it, but I think people feel uncomfortable sort of like vocalizing that or like, like I, I think like, yeah, like people being like, fuck the government and like also like becoming educated on fiat and mm. like feeling like the government is fucking them over more. Like, I think that is a good direction for the culture to go that will also totally. increase Bitcoin adoption. I think that's totally. going to happen because I think yeah, that I think it's happening it is hap- right now. Like yeah. everybody kind of hates the government, but they're not really like incentivized yes. to hate the government. They don't yeah. have, right? and they don't have a purpose to place it. But then yeah. once you're holding Bitcoin bags, all of a sudden you're incentivized to hate the government. You're yeah. like, you know, yeah, I've got my bags like fuck fiat because like when fiat sucks more, like my bags get more valuable. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was funny when you were like, because <clears throat> like, I took the question as like, what does Bitcoin culture need more of? And so you were just right off the bat, like, I think it needs more anti-state. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bitcoiners <laughs> do need to get more anti-state fucking statists. No, no. Fuckers. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but the, the sort of question, like, what does Bitcoin culture sort of need kind of? or culture Yeah, what culture? does the community need? Like, what do, like, what, what do, like, people need to, like, feel okay about it? Because I've seen some, like, like think pieces li- lately that are, like, um, oh, like, Bitcoin culture has has drifted uh, more towards this um, uh, kind of, like, li- like, like uh, and, and, and I say this without much disdain, li- like, the kind of meat maxi thing. Look, I like M- beef. Meat like, maxi. Yeah, yeah I, like, <laughs> like that thing. And I don't know that that's actually, like, the dominant strain of it's Bitcoin. Not, I mean, like, mm-hmm. I, l- l- like we, we all go to a lot of conferences, like, like we're friends with, with some of those people. But, like, you know, like, the, the actual people using Bitcoin, like, even in America, like, how... I, like how uh, much does that actually represent like what Bitcoin culture mm. is? I don't I don't I think, think it's, it's just as Bitcoin much Twitter culture. Bitcoin yeah. Twitter, yeah. yeah, and I'm not on Twitter, so I think I I I don't get that as much and as some it's of y'all. Blog posting like stuff too. It's like there's a bunch of marketing companies that are that are that have, you know, pre mined tokens funding them that are trying to shit on Bitcoin all the time. Um there's I mean it's just like it's so tired. Like I mm. like the, I, I think that this there was a lot to talk about, I think, a little bit ago about like what is a Bitcoiner, what is maximalism, what you know, is it ethical to do this, whatever. I think all these discussions have been had, um, and now it seems to be a way, like, very directly to like put down Bitcoiners. Um, and Bitcoin maximalism, the term was was coined to to be that as like an insulting term. It was reclaimed, right? <clears throat> right, mm-hmm. I think so too. And then and now there's sort of this like attack on like Bitcoin fundamentalism, and they're trying to like reestablish it as this yeah. like meat and god and bullet. Uh, and family thing, which like I, I like a lot of those things, but um, yeah, it's just I mean, it, it, I, I I if if you're a Bitcoiner and you think you can like define what a Bitcoiner is, I think that's dumb. This is what a Bitcoin maxi looks like. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like and like also <laughs> it's like bitches. we should hopefully all be people that you know, uh, you know, like strong morals, uh, strong beliefs, kind of loosely held. So it's like there's a lot of stuff like a couple years ago I believed in pretty strongly that mm-hmm. I like don't believe in at all anymore. Um, and so it's just like, I don't know, like eventually we're just going to be like moneyers, moneyers, Bitcoiners. It's just like, yeah, you know? Bitcoin, Bitcoin yeah. like, is there a culture of cell phones? Like cell phones have completely won. We all use cell phones. Like, is there a culture of cell phones? No, they're just this neutral omnipresent tool. Mm-hmm. Is there a culture of light bulbs? Like, no, not really. Like, are there like light bulb maximalists? But there are like internet cultural maximalist kind of no but what i mean is like it's like i agree with you totally but bitcoin is gonna recede from being something well i mean it's gonna like win i would argue bitcoin is more political than those things i think i think we're gonna have like the 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 politicality of bitcoin will like increase 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 i get that until it kind of wins and then it's gonna decrease 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 it's gonna be like oh yeah do you like money yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you have a t-shirt that says money on it? Yeah, do you like t-shirts? <laughs> like, that's yeah, just a t-shirt. Everybody wears one, you mm-hmm. know? Right. And that'll be the true, like, Bitcoin winning. Yeah, yeah, but that's why I think the culture needs to embrace, like, 
anti-government sentiment yeah. more and just get on board, mm. you know? And just like, yeah, like, I mean, I, I don't want people to just like start like, you know, overdosing on red pills and like going on 4chan every night and just like doom pilling themselves. Like, mm. I don't want you to do that. Um, it's bad for you. And if you can't control or like your emotions reading like ridiculous shit all the time, then like, don't do it. Yeah. But also like so much of this is a lie <laughs> and so much of this, we've just like seen these cycles of these narratives getting repeated by like elected officials or, or talking, you know, talking heads or whatever that are just, just so wrong. And, um, like for the sake of people, yeah, I hope culturally people like, you know, sort of stop like buying it a little bit <laughs> and mm. like and 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 not in this doomer way but in this like mm. hey no like yeah you like with a narrative you can make something happen and it's mm -hmm. like we can take a narrative and make something happen like we can use their propaganda tools we can use their organizational tools and i say they very nebulously like i don't know mm -hmm. but we can use a lot of these things that we see that ourselves get manipulated how many times like i've noticed things i've been thought a certain way that i felt was something that came from like a very like specific narrative you know and um i think just like learning that there's so many things that control so many things that are so far beyond us that we have just like no imagination of what the hell is going on yeah. um i think people should embrace that personally i think bitcoiners do a better job than anyone and i think that's why i'm so like attracted to being around bitcoiners because they are open-minded to a lot of that stuff like yeah. people like laugh and they're like oh man like let's talk about like the nsa and with mark or whatever and it's like funny it's not like this like oh my god he's like mentally ill we want to talk about like <laughs> some like you know some insane thing it's just like fun you know it's just um, wartime bitcoin yeah exactly <laughs> so um I'm, I'm into that embracing all that stuff yeah me if, too if fiat fell apart and bitcoin like kind of filled the void that would be such a legible anti-state event. Mm -hmm. It would be such yes. like, it would be so, it would sp so many people would see it and be like, huh, I guess like the government is, isn't like all powerful daddy that kind of ultimately has things under control. Yeah. I wonder what people, I wonder how government sentiment does in countries which have like runaway inflation. It seems like government, anti-government sen sen sentiment never really lasts or take ho takes hold in a strong way because they're just like, they become anti this government yeah. yes. and then like that government falls and then yes. a new government gets elected and then they're, they have faith in that government until then it fucks up. It, it's ironic yeah. that it's a revolution. It's like a, there's this like built yeah, into the word of it. It's, tone. It's, yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, each thing rises and it rises and it rises uh, and it never really seems to stop. I mean, also I think like, like a uh, really deep, like, like, um, uh, li like anti-government sentiment that has like kind of action backing it up. It's tiring. Like li li like culturally, like um, I think people just like their shit that they want to get back to. Like you know, like I've I've been meaning they to watch the Sopranos grill. for years now. Like I want I, I want to do I other did things. Doing it started like that. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Shall we? I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. It's been yeah. real. Any final messages or? Uh... Shit's gonna get weird. Shit's gonna get weird. Shit's yeah. gonna get weird. Yeah. The don't... dollar falling apart, if that happens, that's gonna be fucking chaos. Yeah. Right? Like fucking bloodshed. Absolute yep. carnage in the financial markets. Yeah, I think tomorrow uh will be one of the more interesting days in What's happening tomorrow? Just the stock market opening <laughs> after mm. this weekend where we've seen, you know, historic currency collapse. Uh, I think tomorrow's gonna be really interesting. But yeah, no, don't use any leverage. Uh you should own some Bitcoin. And uh, hold on. No, go 100x long on BitMEX. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Great. All right. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.